Okay, Veronica, 300 yards. 300 yards, small target on the right side from the big target. Can you identify the target? Yes, I can. All right, get on it. Center hold. Center hold. Are you ready? Yep, send it. That in the center, beautiful hit. Thank you. Hi guys, hey, Veronica is with us. Uh, yes, I and am. We are starting right off the bat with the experience you had with that M4DA1 legendary sniper rifle. I am a bad dad and you did not get exposed to it before actually filming, but I want you, I want you to have that surprise experience because I wanted to see how the person which never had a, a use, we never used before that neural scope and that rifle, how okay. are you dealing with it? So okay. tell me how hard it was to understand everything on it that scope. It was not hard at all. Everything was so nice, honestly. So we got the BDC turret uh, on the top and we were using today the normal 175 uh, grain, match grade uh, ammo. We are not sponsored by Norma, but the price for those was outstanding when we got to the one of the cells. But even with that Norma ammo, the calibration pretty much worked out for both you yeah. and me. Uh, but you, we both know I'm the better shot of the both of us. That uh, you, remains okay. to be seen. Yeah. I went after the no. little targets all the way to 700 it's okay. yards. It's okay. No, whatever helps you sleep at night. <laughs> Veronica, how was the recall? It was not bad at all. Like, you barely even felt it. That, that rubber pad helps. Oh, honestly. And this goes back to the whole M4DA1 uh, design and idea. So, as uh, so you guys should know from the previous, ex uh, previous uh, episodes, I did the episode about the M40 rifle. So, this was the granddaddy of the M40 sniper rifle, marine sniper rifle a program. This rifle started it all. We're going back to the Vietnam War, mid Vietnam War, and to the Marine Corps decided to go with basically the Remington and uh, they settled down for the Redfield 3 to 9. Uh, X scope with the accurate tombstone for the distance and things like this. At that time, that was the clear split between what the army uh, snipers were, were having, receiving from the supply and the marines. The marines went with the bolt action rifle and the army was running with the XM21, which was based on the M14, pimp out heavily M14. The scope though was the same Redfield 3 to 9 X. Uh, but that was the Vietnam War. This is still a wooden stock. The, there was right off the bat, both branches of Marines and the Army learned that the wood is not doing really well in the hot and humid weather of Vietnam. <laughs> so uh, they were painting the stocks and this is a painted stock. Uh, so lessons were learned that you cannot really rely on the wood. So, after the Vietnam War, Veronica, what happened was, the decision was made to continue with, uh, to go with the uh, M4D program. And M4D, let me secure it so that one won't fall, doesn't wanna stay, and M4D A1 was uh, created. And you just said this, that this one was lighter, right? Yes, it By was. Hand. No surprise, guys, this system was nine pounds when the M40A1, at the beginning, we're talking about the mid 70s. It's hard to pinpoint it. Some people saying 1977, some people saying 1976. Let's settle down mid 70s, mid yeah. 70s. The synthetic stock was added. Receiver was kept the same, so the Marine Corps re reused the receivers from the original M40s, but then, as you can see, we got the much heavier profile barrel. And together with that Macmillan stock, which was the synthetic stock, that was departure for the first time for the US military sniper program from the wood 
towards the synthetic stock. So we got the Macmillan stock and they kept at the beginning, they kept the Redfield 3 to 9X scopes because the Unerpo was still not there yet. But even with this, the rifle gained the weight and it was 12 pounds. So from 9 to 12, 12 pounds, huge jump. But that helped probably with the recoil. With the recoil, heavier rifle, uh, the better recoil absorption. So Marine Corps coasted through the 70s with that Redfield scope and we are arriving in the 80s. The work started on the UNERPO scope and that was known to the Marine, uh, Marine Corps. The manufacturer was known from even the 1903 A1 rifles. They were providing the scopes to the Marine Corps. And now we got this beef up beast, which is a 10 power scope. And it has what is happening inside the reticle on it. Well, what are you asking there? Because that can how, mean a lot how, of things. How is it? How is it looking like? So you got the crossers yeah. and what is characteristic? You got some little, tiny little dots. So you dots. Can... So we got the mill dots, and that was for the for U.S. military for the first time incorporation of the mill dot system to the uh, scope. So how is the quality? Of, of the oh, glass. It's sharp. Honestly, I like it. By far one of my favorites. Have you shot the Dragunovs and uh, many other rifles? Yes. How was this compared uh, to those other rifles? Do you think that this was the best glass quality? I would say, yeah, honestly, because it's just so clear and you can see even the shots after you shot, which you can't do on most rifles because, you know, less power, blurry, whatever yeah. for you. Well, 4x power on the Dragon. Yeah, we don't talk so, about that. So 10x power and, and that gives you that. It advantage. really helps me because, you know, I'm like kind of blind. <laughs> we basically used the Norma ammo. The rifle was zero to the Norma ammo and that BDC tool that worked out perfectly. Perfectly. I think the only the only little mismatch was at 600. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Uh, but other than this, the calibration works uh, surprisingly well. I was honestly shocked how well this uh, this calibration on the Tourette's uh, works. It is a weird way how you zero ink uh, that scope. Let's say you can zero it uh, even you know at the 300. You put uh, the BDC at three. Uh, you shoot. You spot your shot. Uh, hopefully it will be on the plate, but if you're not on the plate, you have to rely on the spotter. You have to unlock uh, the set screw on the side and then you're using Alan Ramsky to, uh, to adjust to move physically. You're going to move like you will see the reticle and you got to put it to the point of impact where the bullet yes. landed. And then you got to secure it of uh, the set screw and basically that's how it works. So a little bit unusual. Yeah. Uh, so you got to know at what distance you're shooting. You got to spot that shot and uh, you're adjusting the scope. But other than this, I would say in, let's go back again on the timeline, mid 70s mid with the, the Redfield 3 to 9X and then mid 80s with that Unerfo 10 power scope. I would say this was fantastic system. It was a fantastic system. Of course, we, we, we never look at the sniper rifles in a vacuum here. Uh, at that time, the Great Britain was working on Accuracy International, uh, and that was the, the Green Mini uh, L96, and that was a chassis system. But in reality, uh, they did not start fielding it um, till the like later 80s yeah so uh, it took some time that was like another step forward the marine corps and m40a1 was not the first sniper rifle to use the synthetic stock as you remember ssg 69 uh, from austria they used uh, the first synthetic stock uh, in the late 60s on the sniper rifle and you shot the ssg 69 so it's a little bit lighter so recoil was a little bit harsher a little bit harsher but the m40 a1 m40 then m40 a3 and a5 
fantastic rifles. Going uh, off those odd numbers, yeah, gotta love it. It, it's, it. it was it was really the the milestone for the U.S. military sniper program, and uh, it was a great rifle. It served well into the nineties, uh, past the nineties, and then the next revision started replacing it and uh, moving forward. So. A tremendous, tremendous history on those rifles. Tons of uh, scout snipers, <laughs> my friends, enjoyed shooting that rifle. And as you could see, both for Veronica and for me on, on this, uh, I mean... Mainly me because you know I'm better. <laughs> unfortunately, on the 700 yards, it's limitation. But I have a feeling uh, that we could rock it. Oh, easily. Till 1,000 yards without, without, without any issues. And as a matter of fact, uh, one of us will be shooting that rifle at the Mother Sniper competition in October. And I'm excited. So we will we'll go with uh, the M4DA1 and I think M4DA5 yes. for that. So, all right, guys, that's it. Uh, it was the, the short video, short uh, taste for the M4D uh, sniper rifles. And we want to show off that M4DA1 and talk a little bit about the history and evolution. Not much, but uh, hey, hopefully you got some cool information. Well, hopefully and you learned something new. You could see how how it shoots, and it shoots beautifully. And uh, I think this is a really, really awesome rifle. Yes. And uh, if you could salvage the stocks, because you cannot really buy the original uh, receivers from the Marine Corps, uh, you can look for the serial number ranges and find that, but uh, I never seen the Marine Corps actually selling those uh, M40 uh, receivers to uh, civilian world. If they are in circulation, very few have them, they came in a strange yes, way. Yes. So let's not talk about it. Uh, but hey, guys, as always, it was a pleasure to be a guest in your homes. Here's a Patreon, Patreon of the week. Big thanks to the Patreon guys uh, because they they helping with the ammo cost and everything. Uh, big, big thanks uh, to whoever helped <laughs> behind the scenes to get those rifles and the components. Uh, you know who I'm talking to. Uh, guys, big thanks. And they they, they wanna they wanna stay they wanna stay uh, in the shadows. Yes. So yes. just like like a snipers in the shadows. Yes. And thank you for watching. <laughs> and us. thank you for watching. And uh, that's it. Uh, I'm sweating here. We no, got like 96 it's, degrees. Uh, the real feel is about. a couple days later. It's, it's gonna above be 100. So it is something. Uh, but hey, you gotta do what you gotta do. Okay. Thank you guys. Bye. Bye.